Head net. So we get all kinds of doorbell ringing. I did not make that. All right, it is recording. That's good. All right, so I'm going to get started because I know you guys don't have a ton of time because you have another meeting right after me. I'll keep letting people in. And <laughs> can you guys hear it dinging? Or am I the only one that can hear it? It's crazy. There we go, ding, 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 ding. Okay, so let me hit escape. I wanna be able to show you where I'm getting all of my stuff from. And that's coming from escape, there we go. So our matrix, which you have received by email, but I'll send it out again probably tomorrow because a lot of people were still like, where do I get it? And I know that we're sending out tons of stuff. So after a while that gets to be difficult. Um, let me let more people in. So the matrix, when you're in here, you can click on any of these. For instance, we're in the Quashnet hybrid brainstorming session. So when you click on that, it's asking you to go to slide 16. And then slide 16 is going to look like all the other slides, except for it has the title here, what the date and time is, which I should have changed. Did I change it? No, I didn't change it. We're at two o'clock now. Um, and then down in the right hand corner where it says click here, that's a collaborative document. Every session that we do is going to have a collaborative document where we can all jump in and share ideas and questions and all of that good stuff. That way you don't have to create your own Google Docs and I'll make sure that you have a folder or a link to all of them so you don't have to look for them later. And then when I have the recording, it will go here where it says coming soon. I'll be putting it in there and that will say click here and it will bring you to the recording of any of the sessions that I've done before this one. So, so far I have two up which is good. And we still have people coming in, which is awesome. So if you want to, I'm going to actually, let me click on the link, which is going to bring me here. I'm going to put this link, copy into the chat. And I'm going to hit vomit and return. So that is the link to, is it coming in as a link? No, it's not. Why does it look funny? Maybe because I didn't Oh, I didn't select the whole thing. <laughs> You're going to see plenty of evidence of Susie messing up. There we go. So the link is in there to the collaborative Google Doc, which you are welcome to jump into. If people come in after this and they're looking for the link, anyone who is lovely can copy it and then paste it back in for me because I'm having a hard time keeping up with the chat the list, the notification, the doorbell, <laughs> and all of the videos. So this is trial by fire, people. So now let me go back and I'm going to do present on my slide presentation. This is going to be the same format. Some of you were in the meeting earlier today that I kind of gave you the overview of how things will work. So you'll always come in and introduce yourself in the chat, even if it's just your school, because there's a lot of new folks and it will help them with names. Plus I had a stroke, so it's nice to do for me because sometimes I get messed up, especially after being out of school for months. So learning, new, learning old names is something that's a challenge again. So today we're doing a brainstorming session. Go ahead, whoever's talking, go. Um, it's Katie. The, it says that we need access. So instead of you getting 900 emails saying Thank that. You. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go in here. Really? Are you signed into your um, Mashpee account? The brainstorming. Enter. Oh, I put the wrong one in there. That's why. Hang on. What did I do with that? If I'm here, I go here. Brainstorming. And I open it. For me, up. Susie. I'm not sure why. It could be. Here, I'll glue it in there again. I believe it's set to anyone in Mashpee can access it. So you want to just double check that you're logged into your Mashpee account for that to be able to work. Oh, we have more people coming in. No. All right, let me know if that works. So you'll see when it comes in here, I already lost my train of thought. Um, when you come in here, this is the collaborative Google document. I've used this particular document for all three schools. So KCC already did brainstorming. You guys are here in the middle. 
you're like the cute little middle child. And then the um, MH, MMHS staff just finished their session right before you, so they put theirs in there. I decided if I go back to my actual presentation that to start off this whole two weeks that I wanted to kind of already hear, I wanted to hear what you've already thought of or found or discovered this summer, because I know that you have spent a lot of time trying to find things for your students that would be helpful, things that would be helpful to you as a teacher. So today is kind of an, a chance for you to be able to share that information. There's a saying that the, um, the smartest person in the room is the room. So the, the more that we share together, the more that we're all gonna benefit. And like I said, I'll be starting each session the same way with the same slideshow, just with different information. Um, usually I'll do some kind of preview. Today's preview is just basically we're going to be brainstorming ideas that we can share to start our week off. It also gives me some more material to add into these courses because some of what you found is stuff that's valuable to teachers. So I like knowing that and I like being able to share that with others. So the best way to have a lot of good ideas is to have, oops, to have a, oh my goodness, I can't read it because your pictures are in front of you. <laughs> to have a good idea is to have lots of good ideas. Whew. So I have a video that I'm going to share with you. This comes from Apollo 13, and I think that it is very timely for the times that we are going through right now. And while you listen, I'm going to close my window because it's noisy. Okay, people, listen up. I want you all to forget the flight plan. From this moment on, we are improvising a new mission. Well, sorry, I guess we look at that. All around. Could we get our people home? They are here. Turn it around and straight back, yes. direct aboard. No, 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 sir. We get them on a free return trajectory. It's the option with the fewest question marks for safety. I agree with Jerry. Use the moon's gravity slingshot them around. No, the level will not support three guys for that amount of time. It barely holds. I mean, we've got to do a direct abort. We do an about face. We bring the guys right home right now. Get them back soon. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we don't even know if the Odyssey's engines even work. And if there's been serious damage to this spacecraft, they blow up and they die. That is not. Oh, what we're talking about time, right. not whether or not these guys. Oh, are I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you. Hold it. Hey, hold it. Let's hold it down. Let's hold it down, people. The only engine we've got with enough power for a direct abort is the SPS on the service module. What Lovell has told us could have been damaged in an explosion, so let's consider that engine dead. We light that thing up to blow the whole works. It's just too risky. We're not going to take that chance. In fact, the only thing the command module is good for is re-entry, so that leaves us with dilemma, which means free return to check. Once we get the guys around the moon, we'll fire up the LEM engine, make a long burn, pick up some speed, and get them home as quick as we can. Gene, I'm wondering what the what the Grumman guys think about this. We can't make any guarantees. We designed the limb to land on the moon, not fire the engine out there for course correction. Well, unfortunately, we're not landing on the moon. No. I don't care what anything was designed to do. I care about what it can do. So let's get to work. Let's lay it out. Okay. Captain, uh, flight says it'll be ready in time. I love that video. We are definitely not doing what we um, set out to do, what we were trained to do. We're gonna have to figure out what it is that we have to do to make this happen. Hopefully it's only for a year, but I also think that what we're learning this year is gonna change how we see education, how we see being able to reach students. So as nervous as I am, which has come out very clearly today in all of my sessions, um, I'm more excited than nervous. It's a nervous excitement. Um, I, they got the, everybody home back from, from in Apollo 13, everyone came home safely, and so will we. We're going to get through the year, and we don't have to know it all now, thank goodness, but we'll be wicked good at this by the end of the year. So I'm going to bring myself to the next page. We're going to be talking about anything that you've found, learned, discovered that has anything to do with logistics or organization, being able to find some great resources or tools to use or websites that you've visited. And in these PD sessions, there will always be a shared Google form where you are able to share those notes and um, access them later if you need to or put questions into them. 
So I'm going to open that up now. If I hit this. Oh, escape, Susie. There we go. There it goes. And then I'm going to go into that document. And so, like I said a minute ago, you guys are here in the middle and you're already putting stuff in. Yay. So Splash Learn, you can either speak up and share here in the chat, like talk with your voice out loud, or you can type it in. If you share it out loud, I might even ask you to do both and share it in the document anyway, so we can get back to it. Some people were using their clear touches or something that was hard for them to be able to type. So we had nice people who were typing for them. They, everyone just kind of came together and we added ideas. So I'm going to stop talking and you guys, if you have something to share, or ask or whatever works for you because you're here till 2.30. So this time is yours. Go for it. Ed Puzzle came up in all three groups. It's awesome. It's a program that you can put a video in and then layer in stops where you put in questions that students have to answer before they can make their way through the video. You can use videos from YouTube or from TeacherTube or your own videos that you've created. It's a great, it's an awesome tool. Generation Genius, I've never heard of that one. Oh, it's the new Bill Nye site. Feel free to interrupt me. Yeah, I use Generation Genius in the spring too. The problem with that, and we maybe can talk to the admin about that, but they were doing a free trial in the spring, but now um, that trial as of the spring was over. So, but it was definitely a, a very engaging program. So did it offer stuff that like Mystery Science doesn't offer or is it similar or how does it compare? Similar in a, like a overwhelmingly awesome kind of <laughs> way all at the same time. Um, and Elizabeth Willing can talk more about what she did, but it has videos that are all tied to the to the science standards. It did cover some things that mystery science didn't cover, um, but it was a, they were shorter videos. But then there would be questions and there would be activities that kids could try. Um, but it would be something I think as of last spring, at the end of the end of the school year, it would be something the school would have to purchase a license for. Mm -hmm. um, but it did complement mystery science well. So. Okay. All right. That's good um, to know. We used it in um, Sandwich. Oh, sorry. Oh. That's okay. Go we ahead. used it in um, Sandwich last year. The only downside is it is um, very expensive for like a whole school kind of package. What we did when we were piloting it is we all kind of put in, it does a 30 day um, free trial. So if we all science teachers stem together, we could probably get it for the year. Um, but what's awesome is it just engages those students who might not necessarily be there. Some of my kids. Um, there's always like pre-made cahoots and things like that. And my students, you know, who maybe struggle in different ways, they were really able to express and were so engaged that I knew that they were getting the concept. Um, so it's just nice to have something a little different in that way. Awesome. I signed up for the first 30 day trial and then did it with my home email too. So <laughs> I checked sandwiches and they got rid of it. I was gonna share and not tell anyone, but yeah. <laughs> I got rid of it, so. Susie, I see some, someone from, I think, the middle high school had written whiteboard.p. Does the whiteboard on Zoom work with the clear touches? That's the one thing that we're, like, is new to us now. Mm -hmm. Whether when we're on Zoom, we can be writing on our clear touch and the kids actually will see it. Right, that is a good question. Um, it's, I would first try and, did I just do that? I must have. There we go. <laughs> Um, I was like, how am I doing that? It was me. Oh, all right. I thought Sorry. I was super fancy. I thought I copied off. something and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, stroke brain. Zoom time. whiteboards. <laughs> Zoom whiteboards. Thank you. Using them on the clear touch. I have not tried it because I haven't touched a clear touch yet. So I would definitely try and play with it first to see if that answer comes available easier than me just wondering. I believe if you have Zoom logged into your clear touch, then that whiteboard will be touched right there on your clear touch and it will project out to everybody. The whiteboard.fi that they were talking about at the high school is one that 
each student has their own and you can see all of them as a teacher. You can also um, export it, I believe, as a PDF or a JPEG when it's done. So you're able to monitor what they're doing on those whiteboards while they're doing it. So it's a tool that you can use. You don't even have to be on Zoom at the time. It might be something like, okay, so for the next half hour, I want you to go work on X, Y, and Z. And I want you to write it out on your whiteboard or I want you to you know, put your notes there, whatever it is, but it doesn't always have to be in cahoots with Zoom. Um, but that was, that was a tool that they were really excited about. That's why I put all the brainstorming stuff here in one document, just in case you guys see tools or use tools that other people don't use. It's a way to kind of explore some new things. And I'm gonna draw upon them to put them in the courses because I'm not done putting them together yet. Did that answer your question? Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I'm on the new computer and I'm figuring out, I don't know how to do too many things on this. I, I'm not able to write on there, but I do simpleK12.org and that has wonderful teacher comments and resources and hundreds of teachers help each other on that. Um, and I did some of the webinars over the summer to try and get myself up to speed, which it's questionable, but it was it, it was a great resource for other people helping you. There's so many people out there that are on it that really, and they're all panicked, like mo many teachers are worried about getting this transferred over. Yep. Lucinda, I think you need to um, take the link from the chat and open up the doc, like in a new tab on your computer. It's not like people are writing right on the thing, I don't believe. They're, uh -huh. they're writing. Yeah, they've opened, you can see up here in the right hand corner, you can see people. See, that's, yeah, that's the still, document. that's still, um, that's still Susie's screen you're looking at. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how to do this. I, I, but, okay. so what, what, what do I need to do? Go see? into chat, open up the chat at the bottom, the bubble. Yes, because I can't see? get in chat. Yeah. Okay. And in the chat, do you see about eight messages back? There's a link. Yeah. Susie? Oh. Copy that link. Oh, okay, there we go. I think. Yep. Okay. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. It's all this stuff that's okay. just it's a lot. It's a, don't kid yourselves into thinking that it's not a lot for some people. It's a lot for all of us. It's a lot. So it's okay to feel that way. I do too. It, 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 having like fifty-two tabs open on my computer has become the norm, and I don't like that at all. So it's it, it's very different, and it's a lot. Um, but, and I believe that the simple K-12 was also listed in other, I'm going to scroll down, um, in other grade levels as well. I use simple K-12 a lot. I probably attended 10 of their webinars this summer, and they're usually half hours. Usually they're stuff that they've already done live, and now they're just rebroadcasting it. So you're not really with the presenter. You can't ask them questions. But for me, I turn it on kind of in the background like it's a radio station and listen while I'm doing something else. Because sometimes I already know some of the stuff, but you never know when you're going to get a good little nugget that could be useful. Also, they have a hugely populated Facebook page, Simple K12 does. If you can't find it on Facebook, if you're a Facebook person and you're trying to find it, you can't send me a message and I'll send you the link to it. Because um, Lucinda's right, there's amazingly helpful people on there. Hello. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, am I, I am in the question section, right? You guys are adding stuff. There we go. Red puzzle, eSpark Learning. Did um, whoever put the eSpark Learning in there, do you want to share what it is or what you've learned about it? Oh, sorry. I put it in there. Um, I just got an email about it, so I thought I would look into it. Okay. And it's kind of a neat thing. Um, there's there's some good um, videos to introduce it to you. And basically what it does is the kids, there's like a little assessment and then it places the kids and they go through almost like little web quests and there's there's games and there's um, reading, there's things to read and there's questions to answer. And it's, it's something that I was thinking um, just using like once a week with my kids. Um, maybe on a Friday when for my at home kids while my at school kids are getting like being sure they have everything to take home with them. And um, 
it, it just, and, and what I, since I signed up for it and took like a little tour, they sent the sweetest little, um, they've got like cute little videos that the kids can watch and stuff. And they sent, I mean, I was like bawling. They sent the sweetest little video about um, a dog that's gone to dog school and he can't do anything right. And um, in the end, he goes to the exam and he doesn't pass and they kick him out. And as they kick him out, he hears a, um, a, a construction site and he, he sees a blind person about to fall into a hole and he runs and he actually, he puts his mouth through the person's uh, purse and ends up saving her. And so they like, you know, so he, he, in a real life situation, he did fine, but in a, his nerves and his anxiety and stuff Aww. in his way, it's, it's, they've got a lot of cute stuff like that. And that it is like self directed. Um, so everybody's pacing themselves and they're just, and it pinpoints areas that you need additional, it's kind of like, um, oh, what is it that we I get? Excel. Yeah, like IXL and it'll give you feedback and you can kind of direct your kids and stuff. It, it, I thought it was worth a look. I might give it a try and if I don't like it, then I won't use it anymore. But I thought I'd try my kids out on it. Awesome. It's just kind of something fun to look at. Thank what was the name of that, Colleen? Um, eSparkLearning.com. Okay. And whoever put in the um, the boom learning, the boom cards, I've heard of them, but I'm not enough to speak about it. Do you want to do that? A mysterious boom card person. Oh, if not, sorry, that was me, Susie. Sorry. Don't be sorry. Um, <laughs> um, I actually used it more in a parent slash big sister role to help Michael learn his first grade sight words. So I think it's like really good for that grade level, but um, you could also use it for like social studies vocab, uh, science vocab, context clues. You, the only bummer is you do have to buy the decks of, like it's like a deck of cards you have to buy, but um, it's like more like an interactive sort of game format, which the kids seem to be really engaged with. Okay. That's awesome. There's so many tools out there. That I'm, I'm glad that you guys are sharing them because I can't know them all. I could pretend to, but that wouldn't go over very well. <laughs> oh, Nearpod I've used before too, but not in a long time. I know a lot of teachers have mentioned using Nearpod. If anyone wants to share, they can. I'm keeping an eye on the clock at 2.22. Susie, this, is, this isn't about Nearpod, but I have a question for everybody. Um, in a music Facebook group, I've seen a whole bunch of people yeah, post yeah. escape yeah, rooms that are online musical kinds of things that I'm going to do with it. whatever topic. Hang on one second. I'm going to mute everybody. <laughs> Thank you. And then I'm going to unmute you. Hang on. And then ask to unmute. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. I'm just curious if anybody has seen any escape rooms for teaching or has tried them out or you just because I, ha I haven't gone through anybody else's yet, but I was curious to see how they would function. I think just um, Raina used, I think Raina um, did a math one during our at home learning in June. I've done, math, I've done math ones in the past. I, I did find on Teachers Pay Teachers too, Chris, uh, there was one that was very general. Um, mm -hmm. There were a couple of, I, I always type in free because I don't like to pay for them. <laughs> I'm not the teacher that doesn't pay teachers. So, <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, and there were, there weren't many that were free, but I, there were some that were pretty reasonable that were very general. Um, that were just sort of getting to know you guys. So. Right, because I, I, I was thinking, like Colleen was saying about the um, eSpark stuff, um, when, I've, when I've got it in front of me and the not in front of me people um, to give the not in front of me people something different for part of the time, maybe on a Friday kind of situation. I just wasn't sure if anybody had tried it yet. Okay, thanks. 
Yeah, I love also looking for free things on Teachers Pay Teachers, and it's great sometimes just to find something like that, and then you download it, and you're like, I could have created this. Like, you see what they do, and then it gives you either the, the skeleton or the template that you need to be able to then create something new that's more appropriate for your kids anyway. Um, I think that it's a great teaching tool for teachers. Yeah. You don't have to make it all look as gorgeous as they do, but the basics are there. Um, last summer, I did a uh, MassQ PD on using Google Docs and drawing and slides to make an escape room. So it's a little time consuming, but it's not. We've got the tools to do your own. It would be awesome if you shared that, Carrie, because I think it, the kids loved it. Yes, Carrie, I hope you share. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, we're at 25 past. I want to make sure that you guys are on time for your meeting. Do you have questions too? It doesn't just have to be brainstorming. I want to be able to answer if you have questions. I know some people had um, had them in the other groups. This is almost like a little bit of an opposite um, suggestion here. And it has to do with the emails, uh, Susie, that you and I were going back and forth with. Um, I just figured I'd share it with people who are on this Zoom. I sent Susie um, an email a couple of days ago and basically said, I trust your professional judgment on technology. Um, she's way more skilled at it than I am. Um, and my inbox is overflowing with things that I never even open. I mean, I've got hundreds if not thousands of emails that I never open because they're from all these educational sites that I just never get to. Um, Susie shared with me a few that she, um, you know, really, really loved, and that's that part of her professional um, judgment that I trusted. And then a lot of these other ones, heck, I'm not opening them anyway. And instead of going in, going down to the bottom, going to unsubscribe, being forwarded to another page, unsubscribe, go back to your mailbox, search for that thing again, check all the boxes, delete those you know, 140. There's a um, website called Unroll Me. Unroll Me, yep, you got unroll, it. Unroll Me. And I've used it both on my school email and my home email. Game changer. It is. Game changer. Good, I'm glad you used it, that's awesome. Um, you get, I don't know if any of you guys get stressed out by the number of emails in your inbox, but I do. So that was a game changer. Yeah, the tool can crawl through your email because you give them your email address and it will be able to tell you what you're subscribed to, you know, things that you subscribed to six years ago that you forgot about, but you're still getting yeah. those emails. You're like, wow. Yeah, yeah that, that was that was pretty amazing. But then does that unenroll you from everything that you're like, it doesn't unenroll? No, it all, oh, oh, so no, you'll so see. It doesn't it, take you off all the good sites too, so. No, you, okay. well, <laughs> it'll, yeah, you get to pick, a, it'll all come up and then you'll be like, I haven't opened one of those. I haven't opened one of those in at least three school years, um, or this one I use all the time. So you would never, um, you know, you wouldn't click that one, and you would click all the other ones, and they all unroll. Yeah, Ty's moving me. Did you see me? I just moved. You see one uh, it, it, again. The assumption that people know how to do so many different things, and I had to go Google a lot of things, and I'm not that great at taking them off a, a whole video. A couple of simple things like how to turn a text into a hyperlink, uh, a picture into a hyperlink, to drop a YouTube video in. If you did a one pager on that for beginners or people who are, need refreshers, that would be extremely helpful. Exactly, yeah. I know that um, like tomorrow's, is it tomorrow's class that has the file management course? That one I'm going to be helping people like when you have something on your phone, you're trying to get it to your computer or you're trying to get it from one email to another or you're trying to upload a picture to your Google site or you're trying to figure out how to get it from your phone to whatever the movement of files is. I know that that's a stopping point for a lot of people, but I'm hoping also to be able to answer questions like how do you create a hyperlink in a, in a doc or those types of questions yeah. that make it easier for you to do everything later. But I because, said, go ahead. 
the modern teacher did tell you what to do and showed you pictures, uh -huh. but it didn't have a spot to tell you how to do it. Right. And, and again, you're working with a, a gap in your knowledge, you know? Yep, yep. I will say in every school that I hear over and over again, like, I'm not a technology person, or you know me in technology, I can't do this. So that, that feeling, I, I feel that overwhelmingly and know that there's a lot of people that are trying to fill in their holes of their Swiss cheese. And I want you to be able to do that. So if I'm not providing something that you need, I can either talk to you individually like this, I can stop by and see you, I can do, uh, I've done a lot of tutorial videos for specific people on specific things that they need help with. So I'm hoping to fill in your Swiss cheese. Right, and you you and Colleen had so many great videos like the Screencastify and that were done in a matter of Google Classroom. If you have one and just dump them all in and the latest technology that might help on your whatever, it not do it because if you did it for one, it'll be helpful for a hundred people. I would right. agree because you know not everybody has the same need at the same time to yeah. need to learn that. Um, maybe dumping those tutorials into a folder that's shared with people or whatever. And um, yeah. I think it's way more um, impactful for us when we could actually watch you take the steps through it exactly. versus just being just being told how to do it. Yep, and I know you guys have your next meeting, but on our landing page for every school, I've made a technology um, page. And then if you go in there. Do we have that link yet? Nope, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I work on that between the hours of 2 a.m. and no, I'm just kidding. So over here will be a link to my landing page. Let me see if I can get myself in here into my own page. There it is. And it will have places that you can go for frequently asked questions if you're having trouble with usernames and passwords. But over here is where I'm going to house all of the tutorials that I'm creating. So That's if I'm great. making it for a specific person, I'll ask them, do you mind if I share it? So that way you can all have access to whatever I'm creating. If there's nothing in there yet. Don't look. <laughs> and if you don't have to make them all, if you find the simplest, best yep. version out yep. there, yep. we'll take that as a good one too. Yep. You have done more than enough on that. <laughs> Yes, that, I'm looking for both. If I don't find something that I think is useful, then I just look it up myself. But you guys have to go. You have a meeting. Shoo. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good afternoon. Bye now. Bye. All right, how do I stop the recording? More. Stop recording.